Hey guys, in this video, I'll quickly be talking about my top five plugins. Obviously, I have a lot of plugins that I use. I'm gonna definitely do a part two of this as well in which I cover some of my other five plugins that I use. And these are in, in no particular order. Like some of the plugins that are gonna be coming out in the next video are definitely gonna be more uh, much important as well. So without further ado, let's just get into it. But before I do, do subscribe, do hit the bell icon and do let me know in the comments how you're liking the videos. So let's just get started. Well, the first plugin that I wanna talk about is the Unsplash plugin. And basically the Unsplash plugin is really simple. If you've watched the previous video, you basically know what I'm gonna showcase here. So I'm not gonna spend too much time. So imagine you have like these three cards or let's say you wanted to do an intro section. So you're working on a automotive side. You wanted to, let's say, grab a particular image um, so you can just go ahead, you can open Unsplash, and then you can say, I want an image of a car. And let's say, I'm just gonna use this particular image. And it's just really, it's just really that simple. You can just uh, click on the image that you want. And here you have it. I don't think you're really gonna need too many image sources if you're again, doing particular stuff like this, but obviously you have some other sources as well, like um, Sh uh, Shuttershock or uh, Adobe stock. So if you're working with those, definitely go ahead and use them. But for free images, this is really one of the most important plugins that you can get your hands on. So that's one. The other thing, obviously, we have the, the scale plugin. So the scale plugin, I cannot tell you how important this is. So imagine, let's say I have some text here. So this is going to be heading, heading one. Let's just go ahead and make this font 20 or maybe even 48. And let's just give this particular, uh, card a stroke heading one we have heading two here let's just go ahead and reduce this font let's just add a button here so we have a button component here let's just go ahead and add a button here as well and let's just go ahead and add a, another button that's smaller here as well so now let's say if i have this card and for some reason and there are going to be reasons where you wanted to reduce or scale this thing um, by let's say 50%. How would you go about doing that? Well, if you look at the panel here, like I can go ahead and I can say, I want this to be divided by two. But if I do that, like you can see some of the things aren't really being scaled. Obviously this frame is being scaled, but the things inside of it aren't being scaled. So in order to do that, I can go ahead and I can, let's say, say that I really want you to scale here and I can go ahead and individually do that. But let's say even if I do that, and now let's say if I do uh, divided by two, you can see the font size is in reducing. It's still 48, so that definitely is not gonna work. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove the scale from here. One other way you can do that is you can actually press the K key. By with the K key, you're gonna get the scale tool and then you can go ahead, press shift, and then you can start resizing it. But now I don't really know what 50% is. Like how much do I actually resize to reach the 50% of it? So we have, we can obviously calculate it. We can see the width is 530, 534. So 534 divided by two is gonna be 256. So I have to scale it by 256. I'm just gonna be very precise, 256. Honestly speaking, this actually is a waste of time. I don't want you guys to do that. This, you don't have to do all of those mental calculations. You don't have to, again, be very precise in that resizing. What you need to do is you actually just need to do this. You just need to have the scale plugin available for you. You basically have this. I actually have my hotkeys assigned to it as well. I'm just, just gonna press Command Shift S. I'm gonna say, I want you to be 50%. So I'm, I can just say 50% and it's 50%. I can say, I want you to, let's say, be of, let's say, I don't know, 1000 pixels or you scale yourself by 1000 pixels and everything scales itself accordingly. The font size, the spacing in between them, even the padding on this button component. So for example, if I actually go here, as you can see, even the padding, even the spacing in between is actually being scaled. And this is just extremely powerful. Perhaps one of the most used plugins that I have. Some people may think like it's really basic. It's not really that advanced, but I'm telling you, this is going to be one of the most used plugins if you actually have a lot of scaling things. Uh, that you do from time to time and honestly I do so apart from that we have the the lorem ipsum uh, component so for example uh, or sorry plugin so imagine you have a card here you're going to go ahead and you're going to but even before that let's say I'm just going to cover one particular or two particular plugins even before that so let's just cover uh, a brand's fetch component so the brand's fetch component I'm just going to go ahead I'm going to give create a particular card here I'm going to say it's gonna have a shadow. I'm gonna give it a white background. 
so here we have the shadow. I'm just going to go ahead and increase the shadow slightly. Uh, I'm going to do some minor styling here, just going to make it darker. So we have this card. I'm going to give it an auto layout. And let's say I wanted this card to have information about Apple. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use the brands fetch plugin. And now with the brand stretch plugin, I can easily grab assets, for example, logos of particular brands quite easily. I don't have to go on Google. Like, I don't want you to do that. You don't have to go to Wikipedia. You don't have to go, go to the, their pages and grab the SVGs from there. You basically open this brand fetch thing and you get the SVG logos right then and there. You can also get some of the colors. You can get the fonts as well. But I would suggest primarily just use this for uh, the logos. So similarly, this again has access to a lot of different logos, a lot of different brands, probably some of the most popular ones. So for example, I can search for Amazon. I can search for, um, sorry, Amazon, Airbnb, Adobe, um, you name it. So for example, uh, Nike, um, Envision, Figma, like whatever. So let's say I want to grab the, the Figma logo. I just go here. I can just say grab the SVG Figma logo. And here we have the logo. We can also grab the icon here as well. And yeah, that, it's exactly, it's really that simple. Uh, you can, so just coming back to the point, I'm just going to go ahead and let's say I'm going to grab the Airbnb logo here. I'm just going to go to Airbnb. I'm going to grab the SVG from here. Perhaps I just want the icon. So I'm going to grab the icon. And let's just go ahead and use the icon in this box. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to make it a frame. I, really, I should have really made it a frame to begin with. Now, I actually want this to be, let's say, 48 pixels. I'm going to use my scale tool here. I'm going to say 48. Perhaps 48 doesn't make sense. I'm going to say 64. I think that's probably fine. I'm going to change. I'm actually just going to remove this ellipse. I'm going to give this particular... Uh, frame a border radius. I'm going to say this is just going to be a slight shade of gray. So let's just go ahead and do that or probably even a darker shade of gray. So here we have uh, the image and now let's say I wanted to add some text here. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to say Airbnb. So here we have some text. Let's just go ahead and reduce the font size of it. Um, I'm going to basically or maybe even let's say 32. Now I'm also going to give some spacing in between them. I'm going to give an auto layout again. I'm going to give another text area. I'm going to uh, position them accordingly. And let's say I just wanted the text to occupy this much space. Now, if I go ahead and grab some placeholder dummy text from lauramipson.com or anything along those lines, like I'm not sure what the URL is, but I would actually have to grab a specific text and then I have to actually place it. I'm going to have to reduce it, so on and so forth. But with Lorem Ipsum in this particular plugin, what I can actually do is I can say just generate the, a particular number of sentences. So I can say generate two sentences and let's just go ahead and reduce the font. Uh, let's just make it 24. Let's just make it regular as well. So I can go ahead and I can open my plugin again. I, let's say I want to just grab three sentences uh, and I can also say generate the perfect amount of text to fill the layers frame. Auto generate and that's it. It's really that simple as again, extremely powerful, if, especially if you're creating those mockups where you're going to need a lot of uh, dummy text. Similarly, for example, one other thing that I can actually do is we I've covered the Unsplash. I've covered uh, the Lorem Ipsum. I've covered Scale. I've covered Brand Swatch. One other extremely important plugin that I just want to point out is uh, the content real plugin. And I, I think I can probably do a separate video on the content real plugin, honestly, and I'm saving the best for last, at least in these ones personally. So the content real plugins actually allows me to grab a lot of assets. So for example, a lot of like textual assets, a lot of like image assets, so on and so forth. Uh, and let's see if we actually go ahead and have a look at that. So in the home tab, like you can obviously create your own profile. It's completely free and you can actually save things that you want access to. Now, let's say if I wanted to, if I had like, let's say multiple images here, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, create a component here. I'm going to say this is a component. Uh, these are going to be cards. Let's say I'm just going to go ahead and increase um, this particular thing. I'm just going to close that. And let's say you have like, let's say multiple cards here. So you have multiple cards here. Uh, and let's say these are user cards to begin with. 
So let's just go ahead and have these bunch of cards. I'm just going to select all of them. I'm going to go here and I'm going to tidy them up. And let's just go ahead and place them in the middle. So we have these cards. I'm just going to go ahead and let's say these are user cards. I'm just going to go ahead and I can easily go ahead and say, uh, go to my content reel tab and say that this is just going to have an avatar. So content reel is really powerful. It allows you to place it allows, it gives you access to a lot of like uh, textual content, image content, icon content. So for example, if I, let's say you wanted to grab an image, I can say I wanted to grab an avatar. I wanna say, let's just go ahead and place that here. So as you can see, all of my images are updated. I'm just gonna go ahead and du duplicate this card so I can just go ahead and drag or cut the master component. So I'm not gonna be changing my master component here, but now let's see, I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna obviously name this username or probably full name and i don't know i can also have a another thing probably date of birth or something along those lines and i can have a occupation here occupation um, so let's say you have something like this now if i let's say wanted to update all of these images to different users i can easily go here and i can say apply all and as you can see all of the images are generated automatically i'm going to say i'm going to I, I need these images and here we have the images similarly i'm going to say i'm going to select all of these text text elements i'm going to say go to text and i'm going to search mail uh probably full name i should have searched that but i think i'm just going to get that even without searching that so here we have first name female and then first name male i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to say just use that so we have the first name if I say full name, full name mail, here you have full name mail. You don't have to worry about selecting all of these things separately and just filling them out. Similarly, I go on date of birth. I select all of them. I say date of birth, uh, search for that. And it's gonna result, give me some results for the date of birth and hopefully soon. So here we have the date of birth for them. We have some separate formats as well. Let's say I like this particular format and we can see some of the formats below here as well. Let's say I'm gonna use this particular format, here you go. And similarly, if I wanted to update the occupation, I can select the occupation. I can search for job or occupation, occupation. And I'm probably gonna get some occupation text element here as well, and here we have it. And that's, ex that's how simple it is. I can search for job as well. Perhaps it's not, a, perhaps we don't have a lot of option options available by the keyword uh, occupation but as you can see we have so many things regarding the job title job title we have so many different ones and that's exactly how powerful the content real plugin is now without further ado that's all the plugins that we're going to be covering on in this video if you like the plugins definitely do hit the subscribe button do hit the bell notification icon and do like the video and do mention in the comments some of your uh, top plugins that you use in Figma or anything that I've missed. I'm going to be covering some of the other plugins as well. So definitely stay in touch and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.